Tiger needed a lot of logistical support. That's just the way it was. Need a lot of fuel supplies, following it around, skilled mechanics, parts, all the things that would go wrong with it to keep it in the fight. It was not a simple weapon system, and yet it represented the firepower concept pretty darn well. So in a mechanical sense, there are disadvantages with opting for greater firepower. Weight, sometimes complexity, you know, more expense. In a wartime scenario, the Tiger was considered a more expensive weapon system. How about physiologically speaking? Let's move away from tanks and go back to the gun example for this concept, mobi mobility versus firepower. Now, the SIG is actually a relatively lightweight, full-size pistol design. But it's not always about weight. What about the size? It's not the most compact pistol out there at least the full-size versions. Now, if you opt for a P239, much more compact. But this full-size P226, maybe the P229, a little more compact, but still, they're bulkier. And generally speaking, you need to ask yourself, especially as a civilian sheepdog, i.e. concealed carry permit holder, protecting good people, family, and friends, with your decision and responsible carry of your weapon, Will you have a full-size pistol on your person 24-7 when you're outside your house? Well, I've been carrying a long time, and I'll give you the answer right now. The answer is no. You won't. Not from what I've seen. You'll get tired of carrying it. It's uncomfortable, and you'll just quit carrying it. So maybe you might want to put more importance on the mobility side of the equation. Now, are, there, are these guns equally capable? No, they're not. You know, was the Tiger tank and the Sherman tank, were they equally capable? No. I've spelled out the very specific differences between these two tanks. And the Tiger was superior as far as ranging, armor, and just overall combat capability. There's other things I left out, but you get the picture. So, no, the jet fire versus a SIG, and I'm just going to stick with this example, you know, they're different guns, and they have different capabilities. This 9mm is a vastly superior cartridge to the 25 ACP. The 21 rounds contained in this gun, vastly superior than the 8 or 9 rounds I think this holds of 25 ACP. This is a more capable weapon system. But again, like I said in previous versions or in previous segments of this video, what's it matter how capable your system is if you don't have it? It's much more important to have it on your person at all times. We're not just talking about guns either. We're talking about everything. Let's talk about knives. Heaven forbid you ever get in a knife fight, but if you had to, this would be a good option, don't you think? Cold Steel Notches Bowie Knife. Yeah, I have a review on this. This thing is wicked. It's a hand sword. Look at this thing. Easily lop off an arm. No problem. Comes razor sharp, laminated, sand my three steel. I could go on and on. Look to my review. Very capable Bowie knife. Combat capable Bowie knife. No doubt. You're going to have this on your person if and when that, heaven forbid, that dark day comes when you have to engage in a knife fight. Let me just make it simple for you. You're not. You're not going to be carrying around a cold steel notches Bowie. Chances are when that happens. But you just might be carrying around a cold steel roach belly that weighs two and a half ounces and that you even forgot you had it on your person. But because it's so comfortable, so lightweight, you're able to carry it. That represents the mobility side of the equation. This would be the firepower side of the equation. But it's not all about guns, about knives. This argument, mobility versus firepower, will extend into a lot of my reviews, including tactical gear, like maybe a vest. This is a Blackwater plate carrier. Yeah, I'll do a review on it sometime. Please be patient. But I will. But this is a very capable vest. This is configured for shotgun. Now, sometimes, and like a lot of the U.S. and Allied troops over in Afghanistan and Iraq, they'll opt to carry something like this. A composite or ceramic rifle plate. This is a Type 4 standalone composite plate that is able to stop a 762 by 51 rifle round in FMJ loading. That's pretty capable. In fact, this specific plate put out by... 
get the brand right. First choice will actually stop a 300 Winchester Magnum round. That's very capable. But that capability comes at a price. And the price is it's heavy. This is eight and a half pounds. It goes in a pocket behind this vest and it fits in there flush. So you put two of those plates in, one forward, one back, and dude, you've got 17 pounds in just armor, body armor. That's a lot of weight. Mucho weight. So is it worth it? Well, it just depends on the scenario. You know, some not always does mobility win. You know, sometimes firepower, and again, that's an umbrella term I'm using, firepower also encompassing an armor capability. In other words, we're able to resist rounds in this situation, penetrating, but it comes at a price, and that's 17 pounds of weight. And we're not even talking about loading these pouches up. I mean, you put shotgun shells in here or whatever you're carrying that day. Maybe it's uh, two, two, three rounds. You know, backup pistol magazines, tactical light, tactical knife, water, maybe a little bit of food, first aid supplies. That's a system we're talking. You're looking at easily 80 pounds worth of gear in your tactical vest. And yeah, that's a lot of these troops over there in Afghanistan and Iraq. They're carrying that every day. But sometimes it's just too much. And the human body is not with limitless capability. I mean, we talked about the logistics of the Tiger One weapon system, i.e. the Tiger One needing mechanics and gas and stuff like that to keep going. Well, guess what? The human body is even worse. The human body fatigues. We get tired. We need water. We need food. We need to rest. We get sore. We break ankles. We, you know, bust out tendons. And with that in mind, you might want to really think about your system and how much weight you think you can take. And don't kid yourself. I mean, you guys may think you're super shape. I'm Superman. I can take all kinds of weight. I did it in my video game, so I can do it in real life. Back to the Desert Eagle example. Ridiculous. Doesn't work that way. And guys who carry guns for a living know exactly what I'm talking about. Soldiers, police officers. Standard police officer on his belt is carrying around 30, 25 to 30 pounds of gear. That's a lot of weight. And it's not fun. It leads to back problems, all kinds of uh, issues physiologically. Mobility versus firepower. What's most important? Just depends. Just depends. You know, if you're a SWAT officer rep responding to a call out, uh, I would probably opt for the firepower scenario. I want more capability because the propensity of me needing something more capable is rather high. You know, maybe I want a more formidable backup knife, and I know I don't have to hike mile after mile to carry it. Now, this is not a great example. I wouldn't use that as a SWAT officer, by the way, but just as an example. You know, if I'm not carrying it and humping my gear mile after mile, then yeah, weight is less of an issue. You know, there's a lot, there's a lot of complexity to answering the question, do I opt for firepower or mobility? There's no easy answer. But I will guarantee you, if you use common sense, there is an answer. And like I've alluded to previously, if you're a concealed carry permit holder, generally speaking, you need to opt for mobility, not firepower. Don't believe the pundits and the so-called experts who say you're an idiot if you carry anything less than a 9mm or a 40 or a 45 or a 357. If your tank is not in the fight, what good is it? What good is it as if you're at a mall with your family or your friends and some lunatic decides to cut loose with an AK or an AR or some other type of weapon and decides that day is a good day to start murdering innocent and good people. How good of a sheepdog are you going to be that day if you left your full-size gun at home? I'll tell you, you ain't much of a sheepdog at all, nothing fancy's opinion. If you're carrying, you better carry 24-7. And if that means this is your most comfortable carry, then do it. No, it's not as capable as this gun. You know, this knife is not as capable as the Natchez Bowie. But it's there. You know, just like the Sherman tank, it's there. And that's what won the war. Having it there 
is all the difference in the world. I don't care how cool your gun, your knife, your backpack, your tactical system is, if it's not on your person when you need it, that scary and dreadful day, your system has failed. And it basically served you nothing. So generally speaking, you need to put a lot of emphasis as a concealed carry permit holder on mobility. SWAT officer, different. Soldier, different. Just depends. You know, soldier, am I hiking or driving in a vehicle? You know, if I'm riding in the back of a, you know, armored vehicle, maybe I'd opt for firepower because I'm not having to hump the gear. See, there's lots of ways to answer the question. That is Nothing Fancy's presentation of mobility versus firepower. And again, these are all encompassing terms. You know, mobility covers a lot of things. I've tried my best to explain it as clearly as I can. Also, firepower covers a lot of different things, and I've tried to explain that as well. Make good decisions, guys, and make sure that you've got common sense and good rationale and reasoning behind your choices, and I respect you for it. It's nothing fancy. Thanks so much for subscribing, for the good ratings, for your support. I'm doing the best I can, getting you guys good information, unbiased, without ego, without anything attached that would make it unpure and unuseful to you. Nothing Fancy appreciates you. Thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you later.